Thank you so much for taking the time, Sam. I wanted to start with the question, when did developers become more important than Ferraris to you? <laughs> um, a long time ago, actually. You know, I, when I first started, you know, as any like young, poor guy, you dream of having like a sports car, right? Um, and then I got one. And it was cool for a, for a while, but then you realize that you kind of get bored of it, right? And you need something bigger that you can work on. And and I also felt after a while kind of unfulfilled, just like acquiring material possessions, right? Mm -hmm. So I we, I was like soul searching for a while, and that's when I realized that I'm a, I actually have most fun building things. Right? Like it, it's not about the destination for me, it's actually about building. Mm -hmm. By the time I'm done, I'm I'm kind of sad. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to build something big that I would almost never be able to finish, right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as I did that, I saw money in a new light. It was to build big things, you need a lot of money mm -hmm. to hire really talented people, mm -hmm. right? So now I think of money as a resource to hire talented engineers to build this massive project. And it's the building of it and it's the working with the smart people that I actually get most of my fulfillment from. I love that. And when, it, when you say working with smart people, do you love being surrounded by them? Or is it is the maturity of the reward in I have somebody who brings to life what is up there and... I can see it coming together. Mm. Well, it's both. I mean, it's when you get the best software engineers in the world, you know you can build anything, mm -hmm. which is like a, a real power, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just my imagination, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I met my co-founder, he said to me, I can build anything. All I need is someone who can dream. Oh, wow. That's powerful. Mm. And so knowing that we can make anything... And like, you know, I can imagine it and design it and then it gets made and I know that it will be to that, to, to a good standard. Because mm -hmm. um, in the past I could imagine things and people would build them, but it wouldn't be good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's definitely part of it, but also just the day-to-day -day interactions with these people mm -hmm. is just, it's really awesome. Like... You know, really talented people, especially engineers, their thinking is so clean that mm -hmm. you feel this, like, insane clarity okay. when working with them. Yeah. And you learn a lot from them. I would say most of what I've learned over the past few years has come from my co-workers. Okay. Mm. And did the overall growth of school also force you to grow in different ways? So not just the learning portion, but the where it hurts portion? What do you mean? Uh, so yesterday you said higher where it hurts, right? And so I believe that the biggest growth also happens where it hurts most. Um, did you experience something in that direction? Um, well, I, I got that higher where it hurts thing from, you know, I had a... School isn't my first company, right? Mm -hmm. And so in my, in my previous company, which was like a course company... Um, I hired a lot of people really fast mm -hmm. and I, you know, there's a, there's a saying like hire slow, fire fast. Yeah. I hired fast, fired, never. And, and I joked that instead of hiring when it hurt, I hired until it hurt. Okay. Yeah. So I learned all of my lessons from that. And so the second time around with school, I was very slow in hiring, very fast in firing. Um, and really waited until something was a full-time job, mm -hmm. right? Because if you hire someone to do something that isn't a full-time job, they're going to look, f they're going to like start looking for things to do. And that's really dangerous because you're going to, people are going to start getting distracted from things that need to be done to invent things that don't need to be done to keep this person occupied. And that's when all the damage starts to happen. Okay. Yeah. And would you say that's the same for 
a coaching business as for a software business. So Absolutely. do you feel like feature creep is also something that coaches I don't think it's feature creep. I think it's just inventing things to do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, because someone needs to, you know, a person is, they're a, a, an employee, right? Is they want to keep their job. They want to keep getting paid. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to tell you, hey, I don't think you need me, mm -hmm. right? They're not going to do that. It's yeah. not in their interest to do that. Yeah. Um, and so instead what they'll do is they'll try to find things to do to, to keep busy, to justify their position, right? And that's dangerous for a company because those things shouldn't be done anyway. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that I think a lot of hiring problems happen because people hire people for positions that don't justify having a full-time person. Mm -hmm. That's like the main one. And then when they're in, when they get them in there, they then waste time coming up with things for them to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas that person probably just shouldn't be there. So how do you find things to do in school? How do you know what needs to be done next? And I see the, for, if I was personally in your position, I'm, I admire that so much how you hold yourself. There's so many feature requests and so many ideas All people, like including myself, throw at you, and you have this, you have this clarity and this discipline to say, not important, too complex. Not. How do you kind of hold up against that so well, or is it just by focusing on the next thing? Yeah. Well, there is infinite things to do, right? Like, honestly, insane amounts. So, if you even thought about doing anything, you would go insane and all of your team would quit and the product would absolutely suck. So for sure, like you don't want to do that. You don't even want to try. Um, and so the main job really is, is filtering and prioritizing. Mm -hmm. So you absolutely listen. Like I listen to everyone. Like I read the community posts, I'm in the community, I talk to the customers. Um, And I use the product personally myself. That's yeah. really important. And I, it's kind of like hiring where it hurts, right? I experience the pain and frustration personally. Mm -hmm. So like I actually spend two hours a day moderating, mm -hmm. even okay. though I'm the CEO. And it's painful. So I'm like, oh, we really need something here to help with this because this, this isn't good. Um, And, you know, I go in and I do support tickets, too, to see what people are getting confused with mm -hmm. and stuff. And I talk to the customers to see what they need help with. And then I, you know, I gather all of this information and I put it all in a, in a like, Google sheet. Mm -hmm. And I spend probably at least an hour or two every day just staring at that sheet, thinking, what is the most important thing? Mm -hmm. And I try to come up with a list. And then I validate it back with the customers again. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, we're pretty sure that you don't need to prioritize the list very far. You only need to prioritize the next really four things. Mm -hmm. But let's say you have 20 things. You need to find four in order of one, two, three, four mm -hmm. from that. Because once you've gone through that, the order will change of the rest of the stuff. And maybe new stuff will actually be in that list. Yeah. So that's m most of my job, honestly, is to... to gather all of that information from that landscape mm -hmm. to bring it in, to put it in that list, to prioritize it, to validate that. And then I'm like, okay, I'm not going to think about this again until we do these things. Because at some point you just need to ignore everything and just execute on that, right? Mm -hmm. So I design the interface for all of that. I talk to the engineers and we, we build it. And then we ship it and announce it. And then we make sure that it's it's what people want. And then we come back to, I just repeat that process again, basically. So I'm always doing these cycles yeah. just again and again and again. Yeah. I think as a membership owner, you just laid out this a blueprint for me because it's it will be the very same process that I could be implementing that I also think will be most helpful. So This um, is the process for yeah. making anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's that 
gives me really a lot of clarity. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, do you think that it's this moderating that, that you do yourself and the constant interaction with the customer that created this really loyal school community? I, I just said this to you before uh, we turned on the camera that when I decided to participate in a school game and I was seeing the discovery page, I felt like really intimidated. I did not know what I'm getting into. And then as soon as I was in the school community, I felt so welcomed and so held. And it was this feeling of we're all in this together. Do you feel like it's your personal involvement that kind of created that? Or do you think that, um, that there are other factors in that? And how can membership owners replicate that? Hmm. Well, I used to do what you what you and everyone else on school do right mm -hmm. so i had a business making communities and content and courses and i and i really loved it even before it was cool mm -hmm. so like i don't know why i loved it so much but you know i learned how to start my first business through a course in community right mm -hmm. and so that's how i got started actually and i just loved the space and I loved the craft of doing it. And I did it for like almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I loved working with the people in that space too. Uh, and so, you know, I wanted to make this space better and this industry better and because I actually care about it. Yeah. And so I think that helps a lot because you're, you know who you're making the thing for. and. Yeah you can put yourself in their shoes and you actually like the people. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that helps a lot. And I think that's what creates this, you know, there's not a, a separation really between like the CEO and the decisions being made about the platform and the, the creators on the platform. Yeah. Right, because usually there's a lot of separation, yeah. and the person making those choices, or the board, or whatever making yeah. these choices, they've got a real conflict of interest actually with the people that are using it. Yeah, they're it almost even. True. Yeah, and so it, that's even, you know, we didn't raise money from VCs because I knew that that would create a, um, it would create a disturbance in like the. The relationship and the, the decision making mm -hmm. because now I'd have these people on the board that would be just trying to make more money yeah and at, that would probably come at the cost of like the creators and the members and things like that and so I raised money from the people on school right yeah. and that way I know that we're aligned Mm -hmm. because they want what I want and, and there's no conflict there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so even with the partnership with Hormozy, like he, he's owned one of these businesses before, yeah. right? And so, yeah, I just, I don't want anything polluting mm -hmm. the like purity of school and in how we make decisions basically. Mm. I love that and I just had this aha moment what it is about school that because I did not want to like it in the beginning because I have my Facebook groups built right so I didn't want this to I had uh, I was believing my system is the best I was always recommending to people to not move away from Facebook and so to be honest when I came in I was like I'm giving this an honest try but I don't think that it can convince me to move away from Facebook and I got extremely hooked and I think that because you understand our needs so well and because you're also so experienced in business, you actually built the platform in a way that helps you to run the business in the correct way. Like even how you've set it up, it puts guardrails in how you can build a business on school. And that actually helps us grow in a smart way. Like when I came to you and I said, I wish there was like a front end offer and a one click upsell, you were like, that's too complex. So, the, so school actually forces me to think about how can I simplify customer acquisition, right, for my business. And from the day, day yesterday in the conversation before, I have so many ideas for how to do the same thing in such a simpler way. So I think that's probably the best thing about school is that the way it's built from that experience, it also shapes how you would then build your business. So I think that's a key, key advantage. 
if you just had one acquisition strategy for a school, if you if you were um, a creator on the platform and there was only one acquisition strategy you could choose, what would that be? Do I have nothing? You, you have no audience, okay. you have no ad budget, you have expertise and you genuinely care about people, so, but that's it. Hmm. Um, well, I think there's really only three, first of all. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's, there's building an audience and you've got an audience, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's like Hamza and mm -hmm. the YouTubers, right? Mm -hmm. That works. But it's a lot of work to make an audience. Like you ain't building a decent audience in under a year. Yeah. So it's really important that people just understand that so that they don't have, they don't get disappointed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the second one is you can partner with someone that has an audience. Mm -hmm. That can work. Yeah. Because people with audiences don't want to make a business. Mm -hmm. And people with the business don't really like want to build an audience. Yeah. Like a lot of the time. So it's a perfect partnership. And the third one is, is ads, mm -hmm. right? And I think ads is actually what drives most online businesses. Mm -hmm. So I know with Shopify, for example, like 70% of stores rely on paid ads. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they, and I think ClickFunnels is the same. Like if you, if you try to imagine Shopify as a community, ClickFunnels as a community, you take paid ads away. You, it's not the same, yeah. right? Because that's the way a lot of normal people can get started fast, but you mm -hmm. do have to have some kind of budget, right? Yeah. Those are honestly the only ways, mm -hmm. but unless you can think of something else. Um, that's very, very true. I'm in the ads camp. Yeah. Um, and what would you suggest to somebody who doesn't have a budget? Yeah. So, well... If they don't have budget, then ads are out, right? Mm -hmm. And if they don't have an audience, then that's going to be a long process. So I guess partnering. Mm -hmm. I really do think partnering is the, the, the highest impact, lowest effort, fastest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I chose it with Hormozy, for example. Yeah. yeah, and I was always like actually kind of tortured running my course business because I was trying to do both. I was trying to build the product, run the business, make content and be an influencer. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's, I think a lot of people get kind of tortured doing that. Mm -hmm. There's some people that can do both, like Hamza for, is a great example. He, he can do both really well, mm -hmm. but I haven't met, met many people that can do that. And so I think partnering would, I think partnering is probably the, the best. Mm -hmm. And then you can also run ads with a partner, right? Yeah. So that's what I would suggest. Because building an audience is really hard and it's a lot of work. Yeah. And even once you build one, which isn't going to happen in under a year, it's going to dominate most of your time. Okay. So when you approached Tomos, you had a lot to offer, right? Did there's your whole reputation um, and there's school, obviously, which I think you also observed for a long time. Uh, how, if I'm not having an audience, right, and I'm approaching an influencer who has an audience, how, how can I position myself as a valuable partner if I'm starting out? Like, if you were to shortcut that or give yourself an edge when pitching someone, what would you do? Mm. Um, well, I know it can work, right? Because there's mm -hmm. those guys that pitched Eddie, Eddie yeah. right? Yeah. And I think what you'll find is that these influencer people, uh, they want nothing to do with the business side a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to do anything else. Mm -hmm. They just want to do the influencer part, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you come along and you say, like, I'll do everything and except for the part that you do and we'll split it like this and they like you and trust you, I think there's a lot of it. A lot of it's like chemistry too. Mm -hmm. It's not just like experiences. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think that that's... I think you really have to care and be committed. I think people can tell when someone's not committed, right? I think yeah. a lot of people that try to get a partner, mm -hmm. they might just spend an hour scraping like a hundred people, send out a low effort template email. Yeah. And no one replies and they're like, oh, it doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you look at what those guys did with Eddie Abu, they found someone who had a, a lot of potential and already had traction, but wasn't big. Like, I think he only had 50,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But he was an ex-Olympian. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of approached him and then he said, can you come meet me in person? Mm -hmm. So they were local to him too. Yeah. Which was very important so that he could meet them and yeah. sense their like energy and stuff and, and be like, okay, I'm going to trust these guys. Mm -hmm. And then he boosted this social, he boosted, they boosted Eddie's social up to like 2 million mm -hmm. and then launched this community. And so it, it's like that, I think. You don't need to go for the people that are at the top. You can go for people that have traction, but like like diamonds in the rough kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then look at things that make you unique. Like I think if you're local to someone, mm -hmm. that's a quick way to build trust because they can meet you in person, yeah. right? It's hard to trust someone unless you meet them physically. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of creators out there that are probably local to you, like in your, in your hometown or whatever. Maybe it's the industry, like you personally care about bodybuilding and mm -hmm. and stuff instead of just approaching someone that talks about makeup but you don't care about makeup yeah. like this there's, there's a lot of things you can look at that make you unique to that person mm -hmm. do you know what i'm saying yeah yeah that makes total sense and i also believe that in that case then if if you as the influencer believe that the person has genuine interest in what you do right and that the pitch is you actually don't have to change so much about what you already do mm. uh, becomes very attractive um, that's a great opportunity. If where do you think school will go in the next ten year and grow, and how will you grow with it, or or who who do you feel like you're growing into with school? Hmm. Ten years is a long time. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what we're trying to build is a platform. Well, we want to build something that a billion people use. So to help one billion people find their community is like the the mission, right? Mm -hmm. And so really we want to build a platform where people can make money online around their hobby. Mm -hmm. So if you've got an interest in anything, you can build a community online and bring other people together around that interest. Mm -hmm and earn enough money looking after that community that it can be your full-time job, mm -hmm. right? And I think that num that magic number for most people is like 10 grand a month. Yeah. Like, so really our mission is to help a lot of people make 10 grand a month online by building a community around their interest or hobby. Mm -hmm. That's the side of it that makes the communities, right? And then the other side of it is helping the world basically discover their passion and then their people and their community, right? Because mm -hmm. I think something special happens when you find people that care about an obscure thing as much as you do, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. most people, they just talk about like weather or football or something, right? Mm -hmm. But if you care a lot about something weird and everyone else doesn't want to hear you talk about that because it's weird to them, but you find other people as obsessed, as obsessed about that thing as you are. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome experience. I don't know if you've had this experience. Absolutely. It was when I first came in the online world into business communities because yeah. I'm from a small cow town in Austria. Mm. And then suddenly you can talk business at, and marketing at the level that you're interested in. It, it opens up like your whole world. Yeah. So that's the experience, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. the experience we want everyone to have. Mm -hmm. Um. And so that's the other side of it. That's like the billion people thing. Because I think yeah. people are craving more than ever, like, purpose. Like, what am I, what is my purpose? Like, what is my thing, right? What am I going to get good at? Mm -hmm. And then peers are, that are around that kind of purpose and interest. 
yeah, like friends and a broader community. And I think once you have your thing, the thing that you know that this is what you want to do, and you've got your close friends, like maybe five or ten, and then your broader community, mm -hmm. I think that that brings a lot of satisfaction and, and purpose to like your life. Mm -hmm. mm. Very true. And it's so interesting, in the beginning I thought school is only business and personal development, but as I was diving in, there's a lot of interesting communities. Um, one of my favorite one is the geometry uh, mm. one. Do you have some where you were like, what is this? And then uh, you, you find them really interesting because they're so different than anything else you've seen? I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there. There's tarot reading, mm -hmm. right? There's like um, numerology. Mm -hmm. So people that just love numbers. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of like, there's a lot, I mean, there's, there's that yoga one that's about yoga and like basically swearing. <laughs> you know the one I'm talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> you but know it the one I'm talking awesome. about, yeah. yeah like Yeah, so he's like, Yoga I, I think those ones are funny because it's, yeah, it's called Release Your Fucks. I love and that. And it's about <laughs> yoga, but like not in a normal yoga way. It's mm -hmm. like yoga for people that are like not like your normal yoga people. Yeah, okay. And it's extremely popular. Um, I really like the ones that are, I think weird wins on the internet, by the way. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and so I really like the weird ones, actually, mm -hmm. because... I think people have this belief that you just need to do personal development or you just need to like teach people how to make money. But the things that do the best are honestly weird. And yeah. I never imagined them working, but they have the most loyal cult like followings. Yeah. And that's, that's my favorite part about school actually is mm -hmm. the diversity and the weirdness of like a lot of the things on there, because that's what the internet really is about. I think. Yeah. Like when I first discovered the internet and I was like, whoa, people can be into, can be that obsessed about that. Well, like mm -hmm. I realized that people were obsessed about basically everything. Mm -hmm. And there was a loyal community and hobbyists about everything, mm -hmm. you know, like from barbecuing to hot sauce, to gardening, to guitar, to, you know, just absolutely everything. Right. And I think some of that, like, kind of got stripped away with social media. Yeah. Because with an algorithmic feed, you just get served up what's trending, which is only like five things for everyone in the world. Yeah. <laughs> or you just keep getting served up the things that the algorithm thinks you want, mm -hmm. which is like five things. So you, but in the early days of the internet, it was there was none of that and you could just kind of explore and there was there was so much stuff out there and it was all so unique and, and different mm -hmm. and that's my favorite part about school really and that would be my advice to people building on the platform is don't make what you think people want and don't make what other people like tell you you should want or what you or what you think will be successful, like truly make the thing that you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the differentiator. Mm. It almost is like school is a great solution against this, that the subscribe features are more and more going away, right? So the you used to be able to become a super fan of somebody because you could follow, along and that becomes through the algorithmic feeds it gets very diluted right so even if you follow a creator you don't see their posts anymore right so it, it becomes harder to build community on social platforms like in general because they decide what you see even in our facebook communities people are paying to be in those communities and out of 6400 people on average 300 see a good post like a good performing post and i think that school really solves this problem of People want to be subscribed and part of something, and then they can actually uh, consume the content. And also, if you do something that's truly you, it's the only way that's sustainable. Mm. You can keep showing up. If, if you would lose of all of it tomorrow for some reason, do you think you would be able to rebuild? And if yes, what do you think um, 
is this, are the skills that would allow you to do that? What makes school? Mm -hmm. Well, the experience of the industry is really is one ingredient, right? Because you need to know, I mean, in a way, I'm building it for myself. Mm -hmm. um, not exactly, but I, it's as if I am, right? Um, and without that, uh, it would be very hard. That's one key ingredient. The other one is capital. Like this, building something like this is very expensive. Um, and you need, you need serious money to do it. And the third one is engineering talent. Like this is a very hard thing to make. There's a reason why there's not many social networks. Mm -hmm. And there's only a few people really in the world that are capable of making one. And so it's the combination of those three things, I think. And then you actually just have to, it's, it's really hard to do and it takes a very long time. And so you have to care because otherwise you'll quit. Mm -hmm. mm. Would you say that's the same? For anybody who, who considers starting community, that the one thing or number one thing they have to bring is like they actually have to care about it to be able to do it long enough. Um, yeah, and for anyone else to care too, right? Like mm -hmm. you're in the beginning and for a long time actually, you're the only person that believes. Yeah. And so if that's not there then how can you possibly get anyone else to believe, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's constant setbacks. Like that is, in, that is guaranteed for sure, mm -hmm. right? And so unless you are really passionate about it and it's deeply meaningful to you, mm -hmm. like I think you almost have to believe it's, your, it's why you're here. Like if you look at some of the most impressive business people they had that kind of conviction yeah and then because that's the only way that you'll stay motivated when everyone else isn't and when everyone doubts you and when things are hard mm -hmm. yeah and it's not always like this you know like yeah. sometime but it, de it depends how hard the thing is you're trying to do but you need to believe for sure how can how can we that the there's so many people who joined the school games that are really interested and like still are sitting on the fence of starting the community how can you what, what could we give them to kind of instill that that belief is it maybe just knowing that it takes so long for everyone and if it feels like quicker for someone else it's just because they had an experience some uh, you know in the past that enables them to go quicker or what do you think what would you want to give them to have that belief that it's mm. possible and, and connect with that passion in a sense, because I feel like everybody has it, but maybe they don't know how to tap into it. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't make any, like not even a single dollar in my first 12 months in business. Mm -hmm. Right. When you had the course business. Well, this is way back when I started, I tried making different apps and things. Okay. I didn't even know the course world existed. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but I really loved it. Like even though I wasn't making any money and I was still living at my parents' house, right? Mm -hmm. And people thought I should get a job. I'd had a job and now I was designing and building apps and things. And it was, I just loved doing it, the process of it. And I loved the, the spirit of like the entrepreneur community and everything. Mm -hmm. And so... I, and I, I think I noticed that I was making progress. That was the other thing. So even though I failed and, and wasn't making any money, I did notice, I knew why. Like, mm -hmm. I knew why my first thing didn't work. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake the next time. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing worked, but not very well because of this. And I was like, okay, I won't make that mistake next time. Mm -hmm. And so I was learning and I knew why things didn't work. And I was enjoying it and I was making progress. And I wasn't that obsessed about actually making the money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that led to this, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people, they, 
they want they're just looking at the outcome like they they want to make this much money in this many days and that's just that's a real inaccurate expectation actually and it mm-hmm. it makes the whole process not fun mm-hmm. and really you just need to decide i think if you want to like be somebody that if you want to be an entrepreneur or not mm-hmm. and like if you really enjoy just having a job that's fine then just don't worry about being an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, then you need to commit to it. Mm-hmm. And even though, you, even though you don't make any money, even if it's a whole year, right? Like, doesn't matter. You just keep going, right? Mm-hmm. And it will come 100%. It's just you don't know when. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think people need to understand, like it doesn't need to happen really fast and it doesn't you just need to trust and believe again mm-hmm. right um because if, if you know it's something you want to do then just commit to it and it will come and that's what and then you need it you need to like fall in love with the process because mm-hmm. that's going to be what you're doing every day for a long time mm-hmm. you know i remember michael jordan someone asked him like what's the secret to being the best basketball player in the world and he said to first fall in love with the game Mm -hmm. right and he actually tells kids like play early learn late okay yeah so he doesn't even like competition for kids in until they are older Mm -hmm. because that's kind of what happened with him he would just play around with his basketball and his brother like shooting hoops and he loved it so much Mm -hmm. and then later came the competition and all of that right yeah and so he wasn't he had a deep like love for the game and doing it it's like he would have done it even if he didn't get paid or or anything like that right and i think that's what people need to foster first Mm -hmm. because everything else comes from that yeah and that's what I do. If something is disturbing my passion for doing, showing up every day, yeah, that is a, that's going to, that's a real risk. Mm-hmm. Because the moment you lose your passion, everything else falls apart. Yeah. So you have to not only have that fas- um, that passion, but you have to maintain it. Mm-hmm. And see, so yeah, this is kind of a long-winded answer, but does that does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense, and I just had this. Because I think if you, for example, would give yourself permission to have just a trial, just a play community first, right, where you actually say purposely, this does not have to be successful at all, right? Because I'm not even trying to be successful. I'm just trying to play around with it. It would take off so much pressure because the reason why a lot of people would not fail with it or give up is because they expect early success, Mm -hmm. which is unrealistic. And then they think it means something about themselves, right? So then uh, the it all those stories like it will never work for me i'm not good enough etc and you could erase all of that if you would allow yourself to first have a play community just for fun like whatever Mm. you want to get to know the system yeah um and then really because it's school is addictive as well like the way it's set up and then really start loving to hold a community first i think that's such a and do you know where where that begins i think where do you think by being a member yeah yeah so everyone who makes anything was a user of something yeah. first. Mm-hmm. So like video game makers, they loved some other game. Yeah. People that make apps were inspired by another app. Yeah. People that make communities are probably love being a member of them, mm-hmm. right? It's how it works. Like people that become YouTubers were following other YouTubers before that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So actually that the first and even lowest risk step for people in the school games right now would be go on the explore page, join other communities. There are many free ones, right? Mm. So it's not just for paid communities and discover what you really love. That could also be a way to say, okay, what, what am I actually passionate about? Because you might find out that it's not business by the end of the day, but you actually love to swear and do some, Mm. the warrior tool. (laughs) <laughs> that's actually how i got yeah. started i bought a course right i was telling you yeah, this earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's how i found out about this thing and was by being a customer of it 
Did yeah. you have success from the first course you bought? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, but you've got to remember this was about a year, maybe a year and a bit into my journey. So I was mm -hmm. failing around first making these random apps. Mm -hmm. And then I bought a course where this guy who had a successful software company was going to teach us how to make a software company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I joined that and then that worked. Yeah. Do you think you would have had the same result joining the course without the year of messing around? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, when I heard what he was saying, it, I was relating it to my experience mm -hmm. and it made so much sense why things weren't working. Yeah. Yeah. That's such an important point. I think that you can't, no matter how many things you think through for people, unless they're willing to expose themselves to actually do the thing and have that experience, they will n never be able to apply what you teach them, right, mm. correctly. It's really, really valuable. What would be the, the one thing you'd love to give to everyone who is considering starting their own community? What would be the number one thing you would like them to know or tip you'd want to give them? Hmm. Well, be a member of something first. Like, I think that's, that's honestly how you learn most of it, by experiencing it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you just land in an empty dashboard and you're like, how do I make a community? Like, you should join a successful one first, right? And be a member of it and, and, and contribute and experience it. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say that. And I would, I would try to find your thing, like, the thing you want to make a community about, mm -hmm. right? Don't just try to copy somebody. That, that might, you know, in cases where that works, it only works for a short period of time because the person doesn't care enough to continue, yeah. right? Yeah. So that never actually works. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, really try to think, like, what is the thing you care about? Mm -hmm. and, and then I think that's when you're ready to make one. Um, when you know what it's going to be about and you've experienced being a member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. So ideally, take off the pressure, join communities, find something that lights you up, mm. and then eventually create your own. Yeah, and then just show up daily. Like, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing is, you know, if you just keep showing up, progress happens and it's the breakthroughs uh, are random and like spontaneous and unexpected but those only those little pieces of magic they only happen if you are giving it enough time and space over a long enough period of time for it to just appear do you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah and I, I've always had that kind of um, belief so like with school, you know, I'd just show up, I'd keep working on it, I'd show up, keep working on it. It took years before it started to really take off. But, and there was no evidence that it would at all. Mm -hmm. for, for years, by the way. And it was losing money. I mean, it still is. And we're five years into it. So... If I didn't have that belief in it, and if I didn't enjoy it, and if I didn't just keep showing up every day, it would never happen. And so that's what I think people teach people like it. They've made it too mathematical and like logical, like you need to do this thing, say that, make this money in this amount of time, and it, it ruins it, the experience of it. Like, you just need to show up daily, enjoy it, and give yourself some space and time, and it will come. And you need to believe in it. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sam. That was super helpful. Appreciate it. Thanks.